Um, so I'd like to welcome everyone to this workshop for Medical Research Institutes. Uh, my name is Kristen Kang. I'm a Senior Research Data Specialist at the Australian Research Data Commons. Um, the workshop today is presented by ARDC and Amory uh, as part of an event organised with the assistance also of ARC and NHMRC and the unis listed on screen. So the first part of this event was held last week. There was a webinar by, um, with a presentation by Justin Withers from ARC, uh, and he was discussing the 2018 update to the Research Code of Conduct, and quite specifically the guide for the management of data and information in research. So to supplement that webinar, there was a workshop held uh, specifically for universities last week um, to discuss how they uh, were implementing the code and to share their experiences with each other. Today is an opportunity for MRIs to share how they're implementing these research data policy requirements and how they're approaching their data management responsibilities. Uh, but first, I'd like to acknowledge and celebrate the first Australians on whose traditional lands we meet uh, and pay our respect to the elders past and present. So as, as I was saying, last week was a presentation by Justin on the crux of the data management guide and its context within the research code of conduct. Now the key takeaway from that um, is that the responsibility for managing research data is shared by researchers and research institutions. Uh, today, we're going to discuss, uh, or it's going to be an opportunity for MRIs to discuss how they're responding to this um, responsibility. Specifically, we want to find out what have you been able to achieve at your MRI in establishing data management policy and culture? And importantly, how have you been able to achieve this? Um, and of course, they're not easy things to achieve. And uh, I don't think there's any institution out there that um, uh, feels like it has everything 100% where they'd like it to be. So today is an opportunity to share our experiences and to learn what has been working at each other's organizations. Um, hopefully these insights will be useful, if not informative, for shaping your own MRI's practices. So the agenda for today, uh, we're going to start in a little while with a brief presentation and that's just to get our minds focused and oriented to the topic and that will be followed by a short Q&A. There are going to be two breakout sessions because today's uh, workshop we really want to focus on discussion and um, sharing our experiences. Uh, we're going to briefly regroup after each session and share what we've learned. And then before we close, we'll discuss some ideas for next steps you could consider in developing your data management practices further. Uh, and just as a note, because it comes up quite often um, in these online forums, uh, the session will be recorded and the slides uh, and the recording will be shared as appropriate. So, just to really hammer this home, uh, today we're going to be looking at some key foundational aspects of data management practices at your MRI. Those are establishing and coordinating the policies, responsibilities and culture around managing research data. Uh, as I said, we're going to spend most of our time discussing this by two breakout sessions. In the first session, uh, we want to be discussing data management policies, establishing buy-in at your MRI for data management and coordinating your data management practices within your MRI. In the second session, uh, we'll be discussing your approaches for establishing clear roles and responsibilities for managing data and also asking how you've been able to raise awareness and train your staff and what success you've had. In these discussions, uh, this will be asking you to share what you've achieved, where you've been able to uh, achieve and, and, um, and get success in these areas. But importantly, we want to know how you have achieved these outcomes and what you can recommend to your colleagues at other MRIs. Um, to round out those discussions, we'll also ask you to consider what you think your next steps need to be in developing your data management capability further. Now, I'll just make a quick note that all breakout rooms are going to be the same uh, and each group will discuss uh, the same topics. You'll be automatically allocated into a room and there's no need to nominate a topic or room to join. <clears throat> okay, before we jump into those group discussions, uh, Rad and Neba has 
kindly agreed to share some insights into how Telephone Kids Institute is addressing its data management requirements and to see how they're dealing with their data management responsibilities. The presentation will be followed by a short Q&A. So can you please enter any questions you might have into the chat channel? Um, that channel will be monitored by ARDC staff and will collate your questions for the Q&A afterwards. Um, now, obviously every MRI is different and needs to find what works best for them, but sharing our experiences can be a valuable way of achieving this. Uh, and I'd like to thank Rand and Telephone Kids for kicking off uh, those discussions today by sharing their experiences. So without any further ado, I'd like to hand over uh, to Rad and invite him to give his presentation. Thank you. I'm just gonna share my screen here. Just wanna make sure that everyone, everyone's seeing my screen. Excellent. Yes. So thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Rad Aniba. I'm uh, Head of Research Data Strategy here at Teleton Kids Institute. And I'm here with uh, Tara McLaren, uh, our Head of Research Development. And today we are going to uh, talk about what we are doing in data management in uh, uh, Teleton Kids, um, the uh, success uh, that we have and also all the uh, sort of problems that we are encountering uh, and how we are tackling them one by one. Um, so um, we are uh, trying to um, answer the questions um, about where we are in terms of maturity in, in our uh, uh, data management. So uh, within that uh, well-known data maturity model that's, that's being used for uh, a lot of organizations uh, in the world to just uh, use it as a metric to you know, see the way their uh, research institution about the, the data management, where they are in the process. Um, so the reason why we are relying on the data maturity model is uh, that it's, uh, it, it gives us a lot of insights on uh, the things that we are doing uh, in the right way and the things that we need to uh, focus more in terms of moving that needle from the initial stage and that you're seeing here where most of the organizations are um, across the globe and towards going um, slowly to, to, to a more optimized and managed uh, sort of state in, in, the, in managing the data. So the, the focus that we are, uh, the, the reason why we are focusing on that uh, data maturity model is that it's gonna uh, sort of tell us what kind of uh, governance, what kind of data governance we should have and all the, the things that we need to develop internally to tackle all the problems that we might encounter. Um, and as you see these numbers, they, they are, they are um, sort of a, a global uh, uh, in all the organizations, not just healthcare. Uh, so it, it tells you that fewer of the organization, organizations are really uh, managing well their data as an asset uh, within their organizations to be able to be more pro proactive in terms of data governance. So when I, uh, I'm mentioning governance here, uh, but I'm just meaning data governance, not, not any kind of other governance that we have a lot of uh, governance cores within uh, research institutes, but from the data perspective, uh, what we all aim for is to be more proactive. Uh, and, and, and at least if we uh, attempt to do um, uh, a lot of the um, uh, work uh, in, in, in data governance to, uh, toward moving that needle. Uh, if, if Even if we are in the middle section where we are pre preemptive in, in, in sort of uh, how we manage our, our data, that's also a big win for us. So uh, what I need to mention here, and especially that it's a, it's a trap that we noticed, um, uh, and, and it's very well known in the in the data management uh, uh, area is that when you implement all the uh, policies and changes and data governance towards moving towards a more advanced stage in terms of data governance, uh, you can come back. So it's a it's it's a, actually if you don't keep working on improving all your standards and you don't consider the whole thing as a uh, as a uh, constantly moving um, uh, uh, efforts towards uh, being the best in, in, in managing the data, you can actually retract and go back uh, because the technology is moving fast, uh, constraints are moving, um, we are facing a lot of regulatory compliance, so we need to be all the time working towards um, uh, improving that. Uh, uh, our our data management capabilities to, uh, to be really effective in, in managing the data at the institutes. Um, 
at Teleton Kids, we have uh, different research uh, uh, areas, uh, but what we, when we are tackling these as a from project-based perspective, uh, we notice that we are our researchers are facing a lot of uh, problems, especially in the data. Um, volume that is being generated uh, in all these areas. So what I'm presenting here is a is a sort of template that we are trying to use, not necessarily in 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 biology, but other uh, research that that we are covering. But um, we are using this as a proxy to show that a lot of the data is not just about science, but also about other areas that are tightly related to science. There's the, the governance and, and the procurement and the communication. And, and all these are related to, uh, to that they have an impact on the research, uh, um, uh, the research outcome. But also our scientists, they are data generators. So in, which means that once a data being, is being captured in one of our systems and being uh, used in other in other domain that's going to be transformed into other uh, shape and formats and and we, we are constantly generating these amounts of data uh, so volume is one of the components that is causing a lot of problems uh, in terms of data integration uh, inside generation knowledge management uh, and and the end goal of all these pipelines is to the scientists to be able to generate insights and publish high quality research um, and uh, we, I mean, from all the interviews that we have with our uh, uh, scientists here and also from our network, um, integrating this data uh, is, is the most uh, challenging uh, task for, for the scientists to be able to respond quickly uh, and accurately to any questions that they may have. Um, so uh, this is a big problem that we are trying to tackle here uh, at the Institute. So in order to do that, you need to be prepared uh, from uh, uh, management and data governance perspective. Uh, and this is what we are trying to achieve here uh, at the Institute. So we developed a, so we are developing, we are constantly working on that, uh, a, a simple framework, but at the same time, um, uh, something that might be um, moving uh, and changing over time. So the first step is to, that we found very effective is to try to adopt uh, some sort of data principles uh, we work by, um, and we are working uh, closely uh, with our researchers to try to implement uh, this, the FAIR standards uh, at the Institute. So these are the first uh, building blocks for our strategy, uh, because from these data pr principles, we're going to generate all the, the data policies, procedure, procedures, and guidelines uh, to frame our uh, uh, work from governance perspective. Um, so once we have this sort of uh, guidelines, we, we develop the data strategy uh, and that the data strategy is very, um, uh, it can be complex because it's touching uh, several areas. Uh, it's not just about research, but it's about people, it's about management, it's about uh, infrastructure technology. So all these uh, are building blocks for uh, our data strategy. Um, and the outcome of this is uh, obviously the, uh, uh, the data governance that is uh, really um, uh, specific to the Institute and should be specific to any uh, medical research institute uh, because that's the, 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 the sort of DNA of the, how the uh, organization is, is, uh, is managing its own data. So we, we can have a template, but it should be always um, sort of personalized to the Institute's needs and the, and the research institution needs. Um, so we are trying to work on these areas all, all together, and we try to keep it simple, even though it's a, it's a it's a marathon. It's not it's not, it's, not, it's something that is always changing, and we keep we try to keep it simple because when it gets complicated, usually it doesn't work. Uh, so we are trying to work all, all of us together. And one thing to mention here is that what you see here is really complex in the sense that it's involved. It involves a lot of uh, the organization's uh, uh, core um, uh, uh, business units. It's not just about researchers or, or people managing the data or IT. It involves uh, people in research development, procurement, communication, uh, contract, legal, all these uh, areas. So it's really a, a group exercise. Um, so we are using um, uh, all the things that we can uh, use in order to shape these data principles, but at the same time, we're trying to map this to the uh, pr principle of uh, responsible research conduct. Uh, so if we if we take all the 
uh, eight piece of uh, the, the code of conduct and and we, we see what kind of things we can map from the fair principles to uh, to these principles uh, we find the overlap uh, between uh, all the sides of um, uh, the fair principle which are the findable accessible interoperable reusable and we add the s uh, that we are trying to personalize for the institute uh, because we are really focusing on the security uh, in in data uh, privacy so and this is where we kind of um, adopting a little bit the fair principles to uh, to telephone kits and we are mapping these to we're finding the overlap with uh, the code of conduct and we are trying to drive our efforts from policies implementation uh, perspective uh, in order to be compliant in in both areas um, in terms of institutions um, uh, all what we are doing for data governance and we are we are trying to implement these uh, uh, things but at the same time we are learning uh, along the way so there's a lot of ongoing work uh, to implement these recommendations uh, that come into the um, uh, code of conduct. So uh, covering these areas from an institution perspective, uh, we are doing uh, a lot of work uh, to try to implement that from raising awareness among, among our um, community, a scientist commu a science community, and also doing a lot of workshops and trainings in terms of data management, uh, best practices, the, the good things to do about data, uh, basically uh, um, uh, to to make our scientists more aware of the risks and security and uh, good values about using the data and well, uh, well in, a, in, a, in, a, in a good manner. So we are taking a project-based strategy right now. So we are tackling these problems uh, in silos. Uh, and I think this is the bottom-up approach that we are having, uh, but being aware of the strategy and values of the institution at the same time. So we are trying to meet along the way, uh, and we are trying to train our base of uh, users and scientists to build this data search program uh, in a continuous manner. Um, and we, uh, along the way, we develop all the data policies. Uh, we have uh, a couple of them that are, we are revising and a couple of them that we are ne in need to implement uh, from, from scratch. Uh, and this is to respond to the a changing uh, uh, landscape of regulation uh, around our uh, research. We have a lot of um, constraints in terms of governance and compliance, especially uh, our scientists are working not just in Australia, but with partnership with uh, Europe and, uh, and US and other countries. So we need to be aware of this legislations outside Australia, inside Australia, and try to find that, that overlap. That's gonna impact the policies that we are having and, and impact in terms of writing new ones or uh, updating uh, the ones that I, we have in order to be compliant. Uh, and that also has an implication on the technology that we are using um, and the, how we implement these policies to uh, be, be sure that we have all the safeguards in terms of data security and, 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 and privacy. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna- I'm gonna hand over now. Yeah. Um, so as, as Kristen mentioned in the introduction, this is actually a, re a responsibility for both the institution and the researchers. And we're really lucky at Telephone Kids that we've actually brought Rad on as our head of research data strategy. And he is bringing together all of those silos for the top down and bottom up approach. But the other part that we're doing is really um, clarifying for researchers what their responsibilities are around the implementation. So the, the four areas that we're looking at are retention and publication. Um, so we have really good policies around that, but we are constantly updating them to make sure that they're in alignment with all of the changes to data locally and internationally. Uh, managing confidential and sensitive information with our big focus on stewardship as well as security. Um, acknowledging the use of others' data. Um, publishers are, are taking an increasing role in, in driving researchers to make sure that their da data is open access where allowable um, and encouraging this through open access publishing. And also we've just updated recently our um, authorship policy to include the, the credit taxonomy, which is the contributor roles taxonomy where uh, researchers may be contributing data to a project, but, but not necessarily authorship. Um, which we think is really important. Um, and then we also use the, uh, the, the, the famous carrot and stick approach uh, for encouraging our researchers to engage with the relevant training. So a lot of Rad's time at the moment is, is spending out talking to research team, um, but we also do implement some stick approach just when it comes to engaging with that relevant training because it's really important. Uh, we also have very um, well-defined uh, 
uh, regulations and responsibilities when it comes to breaches of the code and they are, these are in line and went with the code of conduct. Um, so we are building a strong voice safety culture to allow for concerns to be raised and at our organisation we're tracking that and it's becoming um, increasingly we're recognising that there's, there's more voice safety. Uh, we are reviewing the roles and responsibilities of those involved in the management of the breach. So um, as with data, it falls across a number of portfolios, it falls across grants and research development, governance, legal and the HR team. Um, we are making sure that our processes for receiving and managing concerns and complaints are well defined and available on the external website. And with our focus at Telethon Kids on um, Aboriginal health, we're also making sure that they're culturally accessible for our Aboriginal communities to raise any concerns. And we're currently reviewing our processes for managing research conflicts of interest. Um, I think that's something that as an organisation we can become better at. And back to Red. Thank you. Um, so what we really try to do here uh, at Teleton Kids, and I think this is a, a natural evolution of things once you once you figure out where, where you are in the process and what kind of things you'd have to do. Uh, so we having that uh, project-based approach, we realized that uh, we need to um, focus on a, a couple of, of buckets uh, of work that we need to implement. Uh, it might look uh, linear, as you can see it here, but it's not really a linear. It depends on, on, the, on the case. But uh, the first building block is uh, setting up a, um, the foundation, the, the data governance um, units or core. Uh, that's going to that's gonna be the link between the business, the, the IT, and the science community. Um, so that, that's really the glue that's going to uh, put the framework about how things uh, work from data management perspective. Um, the, the second problem is tackling the data integration problem. Uh, in that through, uh, in, and that's purely technological, but also it's really taken a lot of um, uh, directions from the data governance itself. Because the what we're trying to achieve here, and we are we are building this as we as we speak, is try to embed the data governance into the technology itself, uh, so that we can uh, get to the point where we're going to have an automated data governance that requires. Um, less human intervention in terms of updates and and uh, and maintenance and, and and this is should be Im embedded into the technology so that we tackle issues like uh, automated um, data uh, privacy um, tackling all the um, personal identifiable information and all these uh, the, uh, constraints that come with the with the data governance um, and it, it's not stopping there because once you have uh, the data integration in place, you need to extract the information. Uh, and this is where uh, using the the, uh, the eight P's from, from the Code of Conduct and the FAIR principles, all, all of it together, uh, we need to make that data available for scientists uh, in, a, in a click of a button. Um, it's not an easy process, but it, we, it's, it's achievable and doable. Uh, so we need to do that data, make that data tracking and analysis as uh, seamless as possible for our researchers because they want to answer their question, questions very quickly and they respond to their problems. Um, so when we get to the point where we have the data cataloging in place, um, this is where we start to integrate other um, types of data with research data and we we uh, we get into the data streaming sort of uh, capability and this is where uh, things are really well managed and the infrastructure is uh, tightly related to the governance and everything is, is well organized. Um, so the, uh, the last point, which is uh, AI. So AI is not just as an outcome for our um, uh, pipeline that we are trying to set up. It's, it exists er um, all in all the steps that I'm talking about here, uh, but um, it's, it's more of a, how all this research data uh, it's gonna uh, be used by the scientists. So and this is this is where we enable scientists to be um, not just data stewards, but also uh, they transform this data into other types of data, uh, which is which is more concrete in terms of analysis and insights generations. Uh, and it's a cycle because once you have this data generated through AI, uh, it's also another data that needs to be managed. So we, we close the loop and we, we start doing all these kind of things uh, uh, from, from the beginning. Um, and so this is what um, what we're trying to achieve. It's a, it's a marathon, as, a, as I mentioned, there's a lot of, uh, um, you know, things to tackle uh, <laughs> and to, to, uh, to adjust, but it's a, it's a learning experience uh, and we are trying to do that uh, uh, 
as fast as possible and uh, as accurately as possible to, to be able to enable the scientists in the, in the Institute. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, my apologies, Tara, I didn't realize that you were co-presenting, so I didn't have your name in the slide to begin with, but thanks, thanks guys. Um, and yeah, really great to hear um, how you're going about things in a very uh, proactive as opposed to reactive manner as your first slide alluded to. Um, we are a few minutes over time at the moment and we wanted to um, uh, allow a lot of time for breakout room discussion. There are a couple of questions that have come in. So maybe um, I'll ask those quickly, but if I could just um, uh, ask you to, if, if there are quick responses, uh, that'd be great. If there are longer responses, just let me know and we'll, we'll leave it later. Um, so one question came in about, uh, have you had a positive, or what's been the most positive reaction by researchers about guard management training? Or what aspect of the training has had the most impact? Uh, so one-on-one -on -one is, is worked so far. So Rad's done a lot of work with um, identified some teams that have complex data needs. And so through lots of conversations with those teams, uh, we've got people now knocking on Rad's door to actually have conversations about data management. So I think strategically that training has been yeah one-on-one -on -one to start with. And what we will do um, as we move forward is um, I guess, move down into the EMCR stage. And so the researchers who are coming through the pipeline, we're ensuring that they're getting good training from their supervisors, but they're getting good training from the organization as well. Yep, um, that's that's wonderful. And definitely echoes the experience I had uh, um, when I was a, a research data manager um, at NSW. Uh, next question, will you be primarily working with new data sets or are you retrospectively working with old data sets as well? So both, uh, so that some of the projects where we need to uh, retrospectively sort of uh, uh, work on and fix, uh, there's a lot of things that we need to, to uh, sort of go back and adjust, readjust. But uh, so with all these uh, old projects that already started before we implement the, our strategy, uh, it's easier to start from the beginning with new projects uh, when things are um, uh, well organized, but uh, it doesn't mean that we don't uh, retrospectively work on, on other projects that already started. And we, from experience, we, we found that a lot, there's a lot of uh, positive feedback from these uh, scientists and they are all willing to, um, to do the change actually. Yeah, so a really exciting project we're working on is um, supporting the three longitudinal cohort studies in Western Australia to actually look at better data management and integration through a sort of shared portal system. Um, and that's a project that if it takes off, we hope it can be expanded across Australia to integrate many longitudinal cohort studies. Fantastic. 